Welcome back everyone, uh, it's here. And today I've got some r slash best of for you all. As per usual, I'll be reading you the posts, giving you my opinions, and I hope you do the same down in the comments below. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Originally gathered by Culture Inner 3316, this user does not have a tagline. Landlord is claiming I used illicit drugs in my apartment, charging me over $6,000. The original OP is MyCatWS, who posted an r slash legal advice. Posted August 2nd, 2024, Idaho. I haven't been able to find much info about the legality or anything related to this online. It seems that it's a fairly new practice with little regulations. Sorry for the long post, but I'm truly at a loss here. I moved out of my apartment on June 30th after two years. I checked my resident portal yesterday and saw that they have charged me over $5,000 for meth remediation, along with about $1,500 in other replacement charges related to the remediation, painting, carpet, etc. I was shocked considering I never used drugs in that apartment. I drove to the complex to speak with the on-site manager, and she told me that when they did the final walkthrough, which I requested to be a part of, but was not contacted about it, it's legally not required here, there was suspicion of drug use. However, the document provided to me of my final notice has an images for charges section, and they did not attach any images. They performed a contamination test, and the test was positive. So they hired a company that came to the property and did remediation of my unit only. Supposedly, she couldn't give me any documents to show any of this. Some other possible notable info. About a month before I moved out, the tenants below me were arrested and charged with meth trafficking. They had uh, interesting visitors at all hours of the day and night, and I assumed they were using in her apartment as well based on her behaviors that I observed. They placed the charges on my account on July 18th and immediately wrote them off the same day and transferred them to a collection agency. They have not told me who the collection agency is, and nobody has contacted me about it, but I assume someone will call me eventually to demand that money. I asked her to provide me with the results of the contamination test that was performed before I moved into the unit, and she said that there was not a test performed at the time. I don't believe they have ever tested the unit before now. The information that I was able to find from reputable government websites USNAU, claim that meth residue stays on surfaces for at least five years, probably longer, but that's the longest study they've done. I have not received any sort of communication from them since June 1st, a receipt for my rent. I have never had any issues on my end with them. They have overcharged me for rent twice and refused to refund both times, saying it's not possible with their system. They also forgot to sign my new lease until weeks after I did my signatures when I renewed last year, which I found out after being yelled at by the manager for asking why I was charged a month-to-month -month fee. I have screenshots of parts of the lease that I think are relative to the situation if anyone is interested. I have reached out to the Idaho State Bar for a referral to a tenant lawyer because the tenant landlord lawyers I found on Google don't accept tenant cases. Would it be better to pay the fees in full than sue the owner for damages? I don't want this to affect my credit for future tenant prospects. Thank you for any advice that you can provide me. An hour later, August 2nd, 10.25 a.m., I just received an email from the property management that says the collection agency is charging me daily interest, and that if I pay them immediately for the full amount, they will remove the interest fees that have accrued from July 18th to now. She also gave me the name of the collection agency that has my account, which I was never provided with until this point, so I'm going to call them and let them know that I'm disputing the charges. Update, August 2nd, 12.46pm. I sent an email to the property management requesting the following documents. Photos taken at the final walkthrough along with notes that document whatever issue constituted a contamination test to be done on the unit. A copy of the contamination test done on my unit both before and after occupancy and a copy of the one done on the unit directly below me, a copy of the invoice from the company who provided the meth remediation, a copy of the invoice from the company that provided the contamination test, a copy of the notes from my pre-move-out walkthrough that I did with the maintenance technician, detailing the issues we discussed during the walkthrough June 3rd, 2024. Property management said that they are not required to provide any of that to me because it's now the collection agency handling the debt. As I noted in my original post, they posted the charge to my account on July 18th, then immediately changed them to say, transfer to collection agency. I assume so that I wouldn't have the opportunity to get documentation from them. I called the collection agency. They said they have no record of my account. 
property management still refusing to give me any documents. Update post November 8th, 2024, three months and six days later. Idaho. Hello everyone, it's been almost three months since I came here asking for advice in my unusual and at the time very anxiety inducing tenant landlord situation. I wanted to give some updates if anyone is interested as I truly believe the advice given to me here saved my ass and I'm so appreciative to everyone who commented. The property management company is one of the largest in my areas and manages thousands of units here and in other states. It's not a dinky setup, so they should definitely know better. I did not pay the fees in order to sue, like I had originally thought could be the best course of action. Thank you all for the clear no on that one. Just as a general kind of note to interrupt this, if you do pay a fine or any kind of quote unquote damages or any form of payment, it is in a form of admission that that is a valid debt or fine. And it infinitely complicates things. Moving forward. As I mentioned in the post, I emailed the property management company on August 2nd, requesting that list of documents, invoice, contamination, test results, etc. And as of today, I have not received one single document from them. You all were right. They never sent me to collections. They were lying to try and get me to pay the fees immediately. One commenter recommended that I send an open records request to my city's police department. I followed this advice and having that for my attorney from the get-go was so helpful. Thank you. Finally, the outcome of my situation. I got two referrals from the Idaho State Bar Association and neither one of them ever reached out to me again after the initial contact where I explained my situation. I contacted 40 plus attorneys trying to find someone to help me, and of those, three offered to help me. I had put together an organized binder of all important info and documents, leases, emails, arrest records, etc. Two of the three attorneys refused to even glance over any of these documents or listen to the full situation in our 10 minutes consultation phone calls, said they would just call the property management company and tell them to remove the charges, and wanted to charge me flat fees of $1,200 to $1,500 to make the calls. Finally, three days before the charges were set to be actually sent to collections, I found my current attorney. She doesn't advertise handling landlord-tenant cases. She is a rather expensive, highly sought-after civil and criminal attorney. But I was desperately leaving voicemails for every attorney in town at this point, and I told her I'd pay whatever her fee was to just hear my situation. It was a Sunday, and she came into the office to meet with me anyways, in person. Our consultation was three hours. I cried many times and she got increasingly more angry at the actions of the property management company. She reviewed everything I'd gathered and sent a demand letter to the property management the next day, referencing many of the documents I'd provided. Side note, the last sentence of the demand letter was along the lines of, if you'd like to get into contact with the person who actually owes you this money, here is the contact info for the person you should reach out to at the jail because it is certainly not the responsibility of my client. The letter also demanded that I actually be refunded about two-thirds of my deposit and prevented them from being able to send me to collections. About a week later, I received a phone call from my attorney informing me that the company had removed all charges from my account and I would be receiving the check for my refund in the mail within 10 days. And that's exactly what happened. And she only charged me a $300 flat fee for everything, even though her normal fee is $700 an hour. So that's it. I sincerely thank you all for your advice. As someone who is in their early 20s with an anxiety disorder and very easily triggered mood disorder, this situation had me spiraling. Each of your comments helped me to think rationally about the next steps and encouraged me to keep fighting to find an attorney who would help me when nobody was returning my calls. I wish you all the best. It is pretty gross how oftentimes those giant corporation conglomerates that run rental units will just take advantage of their clients because they're very well aware that 99% of them won't be able to navigate the legal system or afford a lawyer and just kind of settle up with the charges because it'll reach a point with a cost benefit where do I pay the same cost for a lawyer with no guarantee of a resolution or do I just pay the fine? And unfortunately, this is a situation a lot of people end up in and thank God OP found a lawyer with a heart of gold. Seriously. That is honestly one of the best goddamn endings I could have expected, because the lawyer could have easily just slapped them with a $2,400 charge fee and just called it good, but instead, they were actually fairly kind about what was going on. I know that when I'm personally done with all my legal hell I'm currently juggling right now because of, well, you know who, I'm definitely looking to organize and do a live stream and charity events for organizations that help alleviate debt from Americans. I know for a fact there's actually one 
that specifically targets medical debt. And I'm really excited to do something with collaboration with them if I can. But yeah. This post was gathered by Direct Caterpillar 77. Their tagline is Satan is not a pogo stick. I discovered that my parents, 50s, have been lying to me, 19 female, about my food allergies and who knows what else for my entire life. Am I justified if I cut them out of my life? The original OP was throwaway for Coco. There is an important content warning for a suicide attempt, gaslighting, emotional abuse, and mental health issues, originally posted on August 13th, 2015. I'm using a throwaway account because I have family on Reddit. Ever since I was a little girl, my parents have told me that I'm allergic to both milk and chocolate. The story goes that I broke into severe hives on my very first Halloween. My mom had given me some milk chocolate and I had to be rushed to the hospital with hives and breathing problems where I was diagnosed with both chocolate and milk allergies. Ever since then, I have never been allowed to eat anything containing chocolate or cow's milk. Over the summer, one of my college friends from out of state invited me to come stay with her for a few weeks. While I was in her state, I decided to use the opportunity to visit my godmother slash aunt, who I haven't been able to see since I was a young child. My aunt was thrilled to see me, and we spent the whole day hiking and just catching up. When we stopped for lunch, my aunt pulled out some granola bars, but they had chocolate in them, so I couldn't eat them. I told her that I was allergic to chocolate, and she was stunned. My aunt told me that I have never been allergic to chocolate, and that my mom was lying to me. She told me the story of how I had gotten ill from daycare, and my mom tried to sue the daycare owner for some stupid reason that no one was sure of. My mom was pissed off because she thought the daycare owner was flirting with my dad, and she wanted to get the daycare shut down. My mom then invented the story about me and the chocolate at the Halloween party. She made sure not to tell the daycare about the fake allergy, and then waited for the daycare to feed me food with chocolate in it so that she could sue. When that didn't work, my mom then invented a story about me being allergic to milk. When my aunt tried to call her out on it, my mom stopped speaking to her and that silence has continued until the present. Needless to say, I was stunned. I wanted so badly to believe that my mom was telling the truth, that my aunt was lying. I waited until we got back to my aunt's house and I took a bite of one of the granola bars. And I was not allergic at all. I was very upset and decided to call my dad. Our conversation was so crazy and out of nowhere that I don't know what else to do but type it out. The conversation went like this. Me, Dad, were you aware that I'm not actually allergic to chocolate and milk like you and Mom have told me? Dad, don't be ridiculous. You've never been able to eat chocolate without a reaction. Why would you make that up? Me, I'm not trying to accuse you of making it up. I was just asking if you were aware that I do not have the allergy. I just ate some chocolate and I didn't have any reaction to it. Did I ever get an allergy test done? Dad, I will have to ask your mother. I'm upset that you are trying to call us liars over this. Me, when did I say anyone was lying? What are you talking about? My mom then jumped into the conversation on speakerphone. Honey, don't you remember that you had hives at your 10th birthday party? Your friend had given you a Tootsie Pop and you were allergic to the chocolate. Mom, I never had a 10th birthday party, and I don't know what you're talking about. I was just curious if I ever had a real allergy test done for chocolate because I was just able to eat some without a reaction. I'm just trying to figure out if I can eat chocolate or not now. The mother responds. I don't know why you need to know if you had a test or not. You can't eat chocolate because we say you can't eat chocolate. You're being a little liar right now, and how dare you say we never gave you a birthday party that year. You've always been ungrateful, and now you can't even remember the party we gave you? Mom, I, I know I never had a 10th birthday party because I was at summer camp. Why are you trying to make me believe that I did? My mom then started screaming at me, and I just hung up the phone because it was so loud and I couldn't hear my individual words. I silenced my phone and watched as she proceeded to call me 40 times in a row. The entire time my aunt was watching in horror. My aunt then gave me a hug and told me that this is why she doesn't have a relationship with my mother. My mom has always done this, lied to people and then tried to convince them it was the truth. I'm very upset about this entire situation. The conversation was simply one of the craziest things I've seen and I don't know who these people are anymore. It creeped me out and I don't think I ever want to talk to them again or else they will try to turn on me. Am I right in wanting to cut these people out of my life? Too long didn't read, mom and dad always told me I was allergic to chocolate. 
I went to visit estranged aunt in a different state and aunt revealed my mom made it up to try and sue at daycare. I ate the food I was supposedly allergic to and I was fine. I called my parents and they tried to say I was calling them liars and then tried to make up a birthday party. It was crazy and I think they're crazy and I just need to know if it's okay to cut them out of my life. Relevant comments. Flowers for you. I'm just amazed you haven't figured it out sooner. I'm allergic to various nuts and I'd say about once a year I accidentally eat one. But when I was younger, my parents kept me away from eating all nuts just to be safe. Hope he responds. They had chocolate and milk banned from the house and had always told my teachers and such about my allergies at the beginning of each school year. I also had to keep an EpiPen in my car starting after I got my license just in case something bad happened. I don't have any reason to doubt them until a few months ago when it all came crashing down. OP adds about her parents. My mom and dad are two peas in a pod and they're best friends. If she's a narcissist, then I'm 100% positive he is one too. I can't afford an allergy test, but at least I know I'm not going to die from chocolate anymore. I don't think I'll be able to pretend that I forgot about the party because it was so hurtful that she tried to lie to me about it. I don't ever want to speak to her again. She doesn't even remember my birthdays and she's my mom. I'll check out the subreddit, thanks. My guess would be as OP was linked to r slash raised by narcissists. Update, November 17th, 2015. It's been a while, but I felt the need to update because my mom purchased a one-way ticket to Crazy Town after I made my first post. To summarize what I found out since my last post, I am not allergic to chocolate. Chocolate is amazing and I'm now addicted to the chocolate waterfall at Golden Corral. Oh god. I am not allergic to milk. I am mildly lactose intolerant, but I was always told it was an allergy to a protein in the milk. I can drink lactate with no issues. I had an allergy test done and it confirmed that I'm not allergic to anything except for some pollen and some animal dander. My mother is a psycho. After I made my original post, I decided that I was going to cut contact with my parents except through email. My mom called me over a thousand times the first week and I eventually had to get a new phone and simply stopped answering the old phone and let the battery in it die. To put this in perspective, she used to call me two to three times a week and this sudden increase was pure insanity. Since my mom knew where my dorm room was located on campus, I requested to be moved into one of the more private dorm buildings because I was concerned for my privacy. I didn't tell anyone except my college friends about the move and I had thought that everything would be fine. Everything was fine for a few weeks until I got a call from one of the adjunct professors to help tutor one of the new students. My school has a master tutor list and any student can call the tutors and arrange for help for free. Us tutors are paid by the school. I told the adjunct that I would meet the student in the library in a few and grabbed my books and walked over to the library. Lo and behold, the new student was my mom. My mother decided that she would enroll in classes as a student in order to contact me. When I saw her, I froze and immediately tried to leave the library, but she followed me outside and wouldn't leave me alone. I eventually managed to duck into one of the fraternity apartments and was able to lose her, but she has been basically stalking me on campus ever since. I tried to report her to the school, but the campus police told me that since she never made any threats, that there's nothing I can do. I tried reporting her to the normal police as well, but was told the same thing. My mom has not left me any voicemails or texts or anything at all that I can use to prove what she's doing. My RA has ensured that my mom is banned from my dorm building. Only upperclassmen are allowed and my mom is technically a freshman. But beyond that, I'm running out of options. My mom posted on Facebook that she's signing up for the same classes as I need to complete for my next semester. She posted her schedule and we're in one of the same classes. And I don't know what else I can do to stop the crazy. She claims that she didn't do anything to hurt me and that I'm just lying about the chocolate and milk allergies. My aunt had to go out of the country for work and I feel so alone with dealing with all of this. My dad has basically ditched and moved out of my mom's house and I haven't been able to get in contact with him either. Any ideas on how to stop the crazy? Too long didn't read, my mom lied to me for years and told me I have several food allergies. I caught her in the lie and cut off contact. She's now enrolled in the same classes I need to complete for my degree and I don't know what I can do to stop her from stalking me. Relevant comments. OP replying to a downvoted comment saying to be a mean girl and take charge. I don't think she's physically or financially dangerous. The only way she can hurt me is mentally and emotionally. I've been able to play it off to my friends so far because she is living and breathing the stereotype of the crazy Asian mother. If I can get this meeting arranged, I'm going in drinking a carton of chocolate milk. 
I'm not worried about her because she's always been this crazy. This is just the first time that her anger has been directed at me. How did the mom find OP's schedule? She found out from the degree catalog they publish each year, the one that lists all the classes you need to graduate. She signed up for one of the 200 level classes I had left and it doesn't need any prereqs at all. She's actually really smart and she somehow managed to test out of a lot of the core classes. She'll be taking Calc 2 next semester. When told to contact the department head or professor and have her mom removed. I'm typing up an email to the department chair now and I'm waiting for a call back from the student affairs office. I've still got the phone, but the police wouldn't even look at it when I try to tell them about her stalking me. It's an iPhone, so it saves all the records of when she tried to call me. The next update came November 25th, 2015 on r slash raised by narcissists. My narcissistic mother is in the hospital right now because she became suicidal after a meeting with me in our university. I feel so guilty. Hi there, it's my first time posting here because I was hesitant to give my mom the narcissist label. That being said, I don't really have a better term to describe her behavior and a ton of people pointed me to this subreddit after I posted on r slash relationships about my mom. To summarize, my mom and dad lied to me and told me I had allergies, chocolate and milk, and I believed them for years until I met my estranged aunt and she spilled the beans and revealed the web of lies created by my mother. I decided to go no contact with my parents and my mom snapped and enrolled at my university and was basically stalking me and enrolling in the same classes I needed for the next semester. I contacted the student affairs department and they arranged a meeting between myself and my mom regarding the stalking. At the meeting, the administrator heard both sides of our stories and pretty much caught my mom in another lie. My mom had her best poker face on and tried to claim that she hadn't contacted me in months. She denied that she had called me repeatedly, denied that she ever tried to get tutoring from me, denied everything she did. She tried to act like she was the victim and that I was just a mean and disrespectful daughter who hated her mom. And then that's when I produced my iPhone and showed the administrator the call log from when my mom called me over a thousand times in a row. This is not an exaggeration. The call log hit quadruple digits. My mom then tried to deny that the number was her cell number, but the administrator looked it up in the student database and proved she was lying. My mom tried to backtrack, but the damage was done. The administrator made us both sign contracts that said that we each must not contact each other for the remainder of the school year. Otherwise, we would be suspended from classes. My mom was forced to change her schedule so that she would not be in the same class as I was in. The administrator made it clear that if she tried to circumvent the contact, even by accident, that she could have her student ID banned from entering the student center or other buildings if I was inside. They are controlled by RFID chips and we have to swipe them to enter certain buildings. After the meeting ended, I was so happy and I felt free for the first time in weeks. A few nights later, my dad called me and left a voicemail informing me that my mom tried to commit suicide with sleeping pills and that she was going to the hospital. I thought it was fake at first, so I called the hospital and they put me through to my dad who was in the waiting room. My dad had laid into me pretty hard and called me names and stuff about the whole situation and then told me that if I didn't want my mom to die, I shouldn't have made her life miserable. So that's my Thanksgiving vacation and I don't really know what to think or do right now. I'm going to bake a pumpkin pie and try to forget about it all, but food tastes like ash in my mouth. Relevant comments by C's. Honey, it's not your fault, not even a little. She's a very sick person. This suicide attempt is the inevitable conclusion of a long struggle with serious mental illness. Also, while we take all threats of suicide seriously on the sub, her failure to kill herself is notable. It is not hard to kill yourself. Even pop culture offers a few methods which are surefire, and a quick Google search will quickly turn up a dozen more. The fact that she didn't look for this information and didn't complete her suicide suggests that this was more of an attempt to manipulate than an attempt to leave the planet. I qualify this quickly with a link to the suicide hotlines should anyone be reading this who is considering suicide genuinely. It's a nasty topic to be sure, but it needed to be said. She isn't dead, and that's significant. OP responds with, Thanks for saying this. My mom is incredibly intelligent and resourceful, and I know that if she really wanted to die, she would have been successful. She can recite stats off the top of her head, and I've heard her saying before that most successful suicides involve guns. I know for a fact that she knows what it takes for suicide, and she's smart enough to find a way to hurt herself without leaving lasting damage. She also made sure to put me down on her list of approved visitors and sign all the paperwork so that the nurses can tell me information without violating HIPAA. She knows that I'm the type of person who would have called the hospital, and then I would know all the details and she could guilt me with them. This one definitely touches on some pretty heavy topics that I think are 
important to explore. That, unfortunately, while it is a very fucked up thing to do, it is common by people who are very good at manipulating to utilize suicide as a vector of manipulation. And I would like to further add that if you are having genuinely these kind of dark thoughts to please reach out to either the suicide hotline or someone you know you can trust to talk with. This is an incredibly tricky and sensitive subject to even approach, and it is very unfortunate that there are people who will weaponize something like this against someone. And I know that I've had this happen to me before, and I'm sure that some of you in my audience have had similar stories, and it's definitely a shame. And it's disgusting behavior. But that doesn't change the fact that if you are in need of help to please look at getting that kind of assistance that you need, whether it's through a suicide hotline or from various other resources, which I will be listing in the description below. But something that I do want to point out about the story is the tone change from you made your mother's life miserable and not the fact that her parents lied about their allergens for their entire life in order to get them into a locked control system all because in the past her mother had tried to sue a daycare. I find it disgusting that they tried to put this on the daughter for this behavior and saying that they made the mother's life miserable when in all truth, it's very much the other way around and they're trying to pull blame off of themselves and flip the script. Also, because it did feel like one of the comments that wasn't added implied this, if you are dealing with parents who have this kind of behavior, you're not a pushover for trying to just simply avoid contact with them and not being direct because you know better than anyone else what they are and are not capable of, and what to do to keep yourself mentally and physically safe. Hey, welcome to the outro. Don't forget this whole thing is basically brought to you by Gamersups. If, if you like caffeine, then I can't recommend Gamersups enough. Use code Oz at checkout to support the channel. And I do actually use this product. It's replaced all other sources of caffeine for me because it, I feel good. It doesn't have any of that extra stuff that a pre-workout blend might have. It's with a couple of the extra things to make it so you don't crash as hard. It's, it's good. I like it. Personally, if you really want a good flavor, try the soda pressing pear or even the dragon fruit punch. Those two are my personal favorites right now.